the JTR Captivator RS2 subwoofers are the most powerful subwoofers I have ever owned. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly just how powerful they are. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. Today I'm pumped because we're going to be diving into REW and I'm going to show you some measurements of the JTR Captivator RS2s. Now I've owned the JTR Captivator RS2s for about I guess six months now and every time I watch a movie man or play a video game or listen to music man I'm just incredibly impressed with their performance. Now if you're not familiar with the JTR Captivator RS2 the subwoofer has dual 18s in a sealed enclosure powered by a 4000 watt continuous amplifier and in my setup behind my 150 inch screen I've got a pair of them. So in this video, I thought it'd be fun to go into REW, which is Rumi Q Wizard, take some measurements so we can see physically just how low these subwoofers will go. Now, before we dive into REW and look at some measurements on the RS2s, if you are passionate about home theater, tours, tips, and reviews, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I produce two to three videos each week that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Now, since we're going to be reaching some pretty high SPLs, the first thing we're going to do is put in our earplugs. We want to make sure we always protect our ears when listening to volume at a pretty high level. And so these are some that I picked up on Amazon. They're pretty inexpensive, very affordable. Um, I'll leave links to them down in the description below. But one thing I really like about these is they don't just totally clog up your hearing so you don't uh, get a feel for what it sounds like. These let some of the sound in, the sound that doesn't, harm your ears, but it blocks out those heavy frequencies that are damaging to your ears. So we'll get these put in and then we'll jump in to REW. All right, so here we are in the Monolith HTP1 Web UI. And so basically we're in Chrome browser and we have gone to 10.0.0.63 is the IP address of this particular unit. Now, if you have the HTP1, your uh, IP address is going to be different. So look on the front of the display of the unit, and I believe at the bottom left corner, you'll see your IP address. Once you plug that in, it'll allow you to go into the settings. It's similar to the settings of, you know, a normal AVR or a processor, but this is all done through the web. So the only reason we're going to be using the web UI is so that you can see the volume and as we adjust that through this testing procedure. So the first thing we're going to do is switch over to REW. And here we are in REW, which stands for RumiQ Wizard. RumiQ Wizard is some free software that allows you to connect your computer to a calibration microphone. In my case, I'm using a mini DSP UMIC one. And we'll be using that microphone throughout this video to take some measurements of my subwoofers. Now I'll have a link to the UMIC one down in the description below. It's a great tool to allow you to take various measurements in your room, especially when it comes to your subwoofers. So in this video, we're not going to do a complete walkthrough on how to take these measurements, but I think you'll find that it's pretty simple to follow along. So the first step, we're going to come up here and click on measure. Now first we're going to be measuring the range from 5 hertz, which is pretty low frequencies, up to 200 hertz. A lot of subwoofers will measure down to about 20 hertz or maybe 17 hertz. So you need to check your manufacturer's specs um, to kind of see where they uh, are able and what their capabilities are. I know the JTR Captivator RS2s are capable of some pretty low output. So we're going to measure them down to 5 hertz and see what happens. And then right here on the output, you can see we're using ASIO. And so that allows us uh, the opportunity to measure individual speakers. And so here we've got uh, the first speaker right here, this first output would measure my left front speaker. The second one would be my uh, right front speaker. The third one is my center channel speaker. So what we're going to be measuring is this fourth option, which are my subwoofers. So the first step, we're going to come down and check levels just to make sure we don't have it set too loud and negative 15 should be more than sufficient. And so REW tells us that the levels are okay. We're going to come over here and click start to take our first measurement. Oh, 
Okay, so here we have our first measurement. And basically, if you're not real familiar with REW, I'll just give you a brief overview. Down here on this bottom line, this is going to be the frequency that it's measuring. So here we told it to measure from five hertz all the way up to 200 hertz. And it did measure to 200 hertz. I'm only showing up to 80 hertz. If you wanted to show the full 200 hertz, you could click on limits, change that right to 200 hertz or whatever you're wanting to see on your graph. In our case, typically when you're um, using subwoofers, you're going to cross them over at 60 hertz or maybe 70 hertz. Uh, even 80 hertz. And so really, I'm just kind of looking at 80 hertz down to 5 hertz. And so basically what we're looking at is this is what they call a pretty flat frequency response. So if you were to imagine a straight line going right here, you know, it only comes up just a little bit, bumps up a little bit, goes down a little bit, but it's pretty consistent and it stays along this line. Then you'll notice right here it kind of goes up and then it comes way down and then it comes back up. My understanding is things like Dirac and Odyssey, they're only able to calibrate down so far and EQ so far. So here is 20 hertz and here is 10 hertz. And you can kind of see somewhere in between there, maybe like 15 hertz, 14 hertz. Um, that's when we begin to see this deviation. So more than likely, this is a result of Dirac not being able to you know to pull these frequencies down and try to make this as flat of a frequency response as possible but as you can see this is pretty flat if we were to take this line right here and to come pretty much straight over if i click here this is at 8.45 hertz and it's basically at the same level 82 db as you know the rest of these and actually we can come down even further so if i were to do this line and click here it's actually eight hertz yeah so that's where we would want to be so basically you can see it doesn't start dipping downward until about eight hertz so this subwoofer is pretty flat down to eight hertz so now what we're going to do is we're going to increase the volume typically i'll increase it by three decibels but just for the sake of this video to kind of speed it up i'm going to increase it five decibels and we're going to take another measurement and basically we're going to continue to do that and continue to take measurements until we see this line begin to change form and i'll show you that as we go along so again we're going to come up here to our other tab and we're going to increase this five decibels and again i recommend doing three decibels at a time but for this video i'm going to go ahead and go five click measure and we're going to go through these pretty quick so there's our second measurement you can see this line follows the exact same pattern as the one underneath it and so we're still fine we're basically wanting to see you know basically at what point do the jtr captivator twos begin to reach what we call compression and i'll explain that when we get to that point so once again, pretty much this entire line increased by five decibels. So we're good again. So we're going to continue to move up in volume. So now we're at zero dB. Take another measurement. Everything still looks good. Increase another five dB. Take another measurement. Okay, my door is starting to shake during those really, really low frequencies. Everything still looks good. We have not reached compression yet. So we're going to increase the volume again and go up to 10 dB on the HTP1. All right, everything still looks good. So we're going to continue on. Now, one thing you can see is when we click measure right here, you want to kind of keep an eye on this. This will kind of tell you when you're starting to run out of headroom and basically you're getting kind of, you know, close to maxing out. I believe it's the, the microphone that's maxing out. You're about to run out of headroom on that. And so we're getting kind of close to that, but we still have some room. So we're going to take another measurement. All right, at this point, my room <laughs> sounds like it's falling apart. Uh, I do still have my earplugs in, but I can see my screen shake. My door is vibrating, you know, just crazy. And pretty much my entire cabinet is shaking. But as we see the graph here, 
Each one of these are pretty much symmetrical. I mean, they're following the same exact pattern. So we still have not reached compression. So we're going to flip back over here. And actually we are running out of volume. So basically, um, I think the HTP one can go up to um, 22 dB. So right now we're at 20 dB. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Somehow that seems a little odd to me um, that we're at 20 decibels above reference. Um, so um, I, I have some questions there and I have some thoughts there, but for this video, we're gonna keep going because really all we're mainly concerned is at what point do the RS2s hit compression? And so we're gonna take our last measurement. This is all we've got left. So let's see if we hit compression. All right, guys, this is absolutely blowing my mind. Look at what's happening here. So, you know, we started off really low and we just kept increasing, 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 increasing the volume. We basically maxed out the receiver or the, the processor and we have still not hit compression. And to me, this is what is absolutely crazy. Let's take a look at these numbers. And so if I were to click, you know, say right here at 20 Hertz, so down here, you can see the 20 Hertz. If I were to click here, we're hitting 113 decibels, which is pretty loud. Again, I definitely recommend using earplugs when you're you know, doing some testing like this. You definitely don't want to damage your hearing. And so, um, but that's hundred and almost 114 decibels at 20 Hertz. But to me, where these JTRs just blow my mind is look at this, guys. So down here, you know, again in my room, it started going up here. So I'm actually gonna click right here. So at 9.32 Hertz, we hit almost 120 decibels, 119.4 decibels. But this is what's crazy. So remember what I told you about flat, um, you know, frequency response. So if I look at this line right here, and if we just kind of follow this straight over here, if I were to click right here, that is 7.86 hertz, and we're still at a crazy 114 dB. So that's the same that we measured down here at 20 hertz. And so we're having the same exact output at 7-ish hertz, you know, the high 7s, between 7 and 8 hertz, as we do at 20 hertz, guys. Most subwoofers, you'll see a line that goes from 20 hertz and then it'll just start dipping down real quick and just kind of drop off like that right there and it'll go straight down. You do not have a lot of output in most subwoofers down in these teens in the, you know, the 10, 9, 8. Um, some, some subwoofers, you know, they'll hit flat down to, you know, 5 hertz or 4 hertz. But this JTR or this pair of JTR Captivator RS2s are hitting single digits in my room with some ridiculous amount of authority. And again, we never even got to compression. So I'm not sure how much louder we could have gone and how much more output we could have gotten if we could have had more volume on the receiver. Now, I'm not an REW expert, and so I'm not sure if I could come in here and click measure and change this level here and get more output. Um, but since I'm, you know, this really, I I'm pretty limited in my knowledge on REW. Um, Honestly, guys, I'm good. I don't need to know that these things hit 120 or 125 or 130 dB, which I don't think they would. But even if they could, I can promise you 115 decibels, 113 decibels right here at uh, pretty much 7 hertz is ridiculous. That is plenty for me. You know, so, oh my goodness, that is just, it literally, guys, it's blowing my mind how much authority and how much power these two subwoofers have in my setup. Now, there are definitely some great subwoofers out on the market and just a lot of good options for you as a consumer. But guys, I can tell you right now, if you want to take your subwoofer experience to the next level, if you're used to, you know, something like uh, maybe Martin Logan subwoofers or Clip subwoofers or SVS subwoofers, none of them even remotely compare to what I'm experiencing with these RS2s. 
when you look at the charts, it would take probably five, maybe six uh, PB16s, SVS PB16s, to equal the same output down to eight hertz as I was getting with my RS2s. That's incredible. And most subwoofers that I've owned, my previous clips, RSW15s, they would go down to about 20 hertz and then pretty much drop like a rock. My PB16s, I had a pair of those for a while, and those would go down, I think, to about 17 hertz, and then they would begin to drop off. So I've never had subwoofers that would go down to single digits. And I'll be honest with you guys, it's a whole new experience. Now granted, you can't hear five hertz, you can't hear eight hertz, you can't hear 10 hertz, but I'm gonna tell you right now, in my home theater, you can certainly feel it because it not only pressurizes the room, but it pressurizes my entire body. Well guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're interested in JTR, I'll leave links to them down in the description below. And as always, you guys be blessed, and we'll catch you in the next video.